All right, everybody, welcome back to another video lesson from ICU Advantage. My name is Eddie Watson, and my goal with this YouTube channel is to try and give you guys the confidence to succeed in the ICU by taking these complex critical care subjects and making them easy to understand. I hope that I'm able to do just that for you, and if I am, then I invite you to subscribe to the channel below. Make sure you hit that bell icon though, so that way you never miss out when I release a new lesson. Also make sure at the end of this lesson that you head on over to icuadvantage.com or follow the link down in the lesson description to take the quiz and test your knowledge and learning on this particular lesson, as well as be entered into a chance to win weekly prizes. All right, so in this lesson here, we're going to be talking about an important aspect of our patient's fluid management. When they have depleted their stores of water, we need to be able to replace this and thus we need to know about their free water deficit and how we really determine what that is. So let's get into talking about just that. All right, so as we've been talking about fluid management over the past few lessons, another important thing for us to know and manage is gonna be our patient that is deficient in their body's water. This is what we refer to as free water deficit. Now, unfortunately, if you remember from the first lesson where I talked about the different IV fluids, which I'm going to link to up above here if you haven't watched that already, unfortunately, most of this water is stored intracellularly. As a result, we really have no way to accurately measure this and determine if our patients are actually deficient in water or not. Instead, we have to rely on a surrogate to tell us this information. So in comes sodium. Our serum sodium concentration actually serves as a great surrogate to tell us about our patient's total body water. Whether their levels are in the normal ranges, which range from 135 to 145 millimoles or milliequivalents, however you want to refer to it, per liter, whether they're hyponatremic or hypernatremic, we can use this information to determine what their body composition of water is. And why is this? Our body's total sodium amount actually never changes. And so our serum sodium concentration does not equal our total sodium. That total sodium is never changing. Now, there are some situations where this isn't true, but for the most part, we can pretty much rely on this as fact. Now, knowing that the total sodium doesn't change, we can use the concentration in serum to tell us about their body water. And so to explain this, let's imagine here that we have 140 millimoles of sodium. Now, if we were to dilute this with one liter of water, then we basically would have 140 millimoles per liter, which would be a normal concentration of sodium that we'd expect. Now, as an extreme example, if we were to take the same 140 millimoles of sodium and dilute this with only 500 mLs of water, we would have a much more concentrated solution. If we were to sample this concentrated blood, we'd see a value of 280 millimoles per liter. Now, this really isn't realistic, but I do want you to kind of understand this relationship that I'm talking about here. Now, on the other hand, if we take the same 140 millimoles of sodium and then we were to dilute that with two liters of water, then we'd end up with a less concentrated solution of 70 millimoles per liter. Again, extreme and unrealistic, but does this make sense to you guys how the total sodium amount that we're working with is staying the same, but based on how much or how little water, we're seeing different concentrations when we were to sample that fluid. In these examples, like I said, we aren't changing the sodium, but when we do sample the concentration, aka our patient's serum sodium level, we can determine how much water there is. And so to loop this all back in, if our patient is hypernatremic, then this means that they're going to be deficient in water because it's more concentrated, meaning that there's less water there. And if they're hyponatremic, they have too much free water. It's too dilute of a concentration. So hopefully that makes sense for you guys. Uh, it really helps to kind of understand that that amount of sodium is not actually changing. The only thing that's changing is how much water is either diluting or is not present in order to concentrate that sodium and whatever volume is left. So having that out of the way, let's actually move in and talk about how we are going to calculate the free water deficit. So if we see our patient's sodium concentration is climbing, 
this should be telling us that the patient is losing water. Now, based on their serum sodium concentration, we can calculate what this free water deficit is. So to do this, we need to know a couple of things. Obviously, we need to know our patient's serum sodium level, and then we need to know our patient's total body water. So we can calculate this based on if they are male or female, and if they're elderly, and based on their weight. And what we use is something called a correction factor. Now for men, this correction factor is going to be 0.6. For women, it's going to be 0.5. For elderly men, it's also the same 0.5. For elderly women, it's 0.4. And this is basically telling us what percentage of their weight that water actually is. And so what we do is we multiply their weight by the appropriate correction factor to give us their total body water. Knowing the total body water, we can then use this calculation where we take the total body water and then multiply it by, first we take our patient's serum sodium and then minus 140 and then divide that by 140. All right, so I know what you're thinking. Here we go with another calculation, but let's kind of talk through this. It's a pretty quick and easy calculation in order to do, but let's let's talk through an example here. So let's say that we have a 50-year-old female patient who weighs 80 kilograms and has a serum sodium of 165. So she's obviously pretty hypernatremic. So first we need to calculate the total body water. We know that she's a female uh, at 50 years. I would not say that she's elderly, so we're going to use a correction factor of 0.5. So here we're going to take her weight, so 80 times 0.5, which equals 40. And so this means that our patient's total body water is 40 liters. So now we know that their sodium concentration is 165 millimoles per liter. So if we multiply this 165 times the 40 liters, we know that she has 660 millimoles of total sodium. Now, since we know that this total amount doesn't change, we know that if we want a serum sodium of 140, then we would multiply 140 times 40 plus some extra amount of fluid, which we're gonna say is X here, and that this is gonna equal the same 660. Now, we can either do the math here, or we can actually use the formula that I mentioned. So we know free water deficit is going to be equal to the total body water times the serum sodium minus 140 divided by 140. So here we can plug in our numbers. We can say 40 times uh, the serum sodium of 165 minus 40, which is going to give us 25 divided by 140. Then when we do the math here, we get basically 40 times 0.17857 which gives us a total of 7.14 liters. And this is her free water deficit. Now we can check our work like we just talked about and we can add 40 plus this free water deficit giving us a total of 47.14. And so if we multiply our 47.14 times 140, lo and behold, we get our 6,600 millimoles of sodium. So in this case here, we know that this lady is deficient over seven liters of water that we would need to replace back into her in order to bring her sodium back down to the normal level and essentially give her the water that she needs. Now real quick, I do wanna talk about a quick shortcut for basically guesstimating what the free water deficit is. If we take the sodium level, subtract 140, divide that number by three, and then adjust it either up or down based on gender, age, and weight, we get a pretty rough estimation of what their free water deficit is gonna be. So using our example here, she had 165 for her sodium, and so we'd subtract 140, giving us 25, divide that by three, we would get 8.3 liters, but since we know that this is a female, we would adjust this number down, and you can see we're getting kind of close to what we calculated in our 7.14. So again, this is a quick and dirty way to have an idea of free water deficit, but it's not gonna be an exact calculation. So let's actually do one more example just to make sure that we're driving this point home here. Let's say we have a 25-year-old male who weighs 85 kilograms with a serum sodium of 158. Go ahead and pause the lesson here, try to calculate what the free water deficit is going to be for this gentleman, and then go ahead and leave your answer down in the comments and let's see if you actually got it.
All right, so let's go ahead and calculate this one out. So first we need to figure out the total body water calculation. His correction factor is gonna be 0 0.6. So we're gonna take his weight 85 times 0 0.6, which is gonna give us 51 liters. Now we're gonna take 51, multiply that by his serum sodium of 158 minus 140, divided by 140. And when we do this math, we get approximately 6.6 .6 liters of free water deficit. So I hope that you guys got that right. If you ran into any problems, please feel free to leave your questions down in the comments. I'll try to respond and help out with you guys, uh, or just go back and rewatch this part of the lesson. Hopefully that will make sense for you guys. All right, so now that we have this value, we actually need to replace it. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about replacing the free water deficit. So when it comes to replacing our patient's free water deficit, once again, our oral or enteral intake is going to be our preferred method. Unfortunately, though, we cannot always do this, so we may need to use IV fluids, and here typically we're going to use D5 water. So D5 water, if you remember again from that first lesson, starts off isotonic, but then as the dextrose is metabolized, we're left with free water, and thus it's actually quite hypotonic. Now, sterile water would be pure water too, but we can't actually infuse this as a fluid because it would lyse our RBC, so we have to use the dextrose. And then once again from that first lesson, uh, you'll remember that the water that we're going to give the patient is going to be evenly distributed across the various fluid compartments, and thus it will replenish the free water deficit by using the D5 water. Now, there are a couple things to remember with this. First is that the free water deficit is not a static value. This is truly only a moment in time. Right now, what is their deficit? and this value changes as time goes on. And really to that last point, the free water deficit does not account for any ongoing losses. So urine, GI losses, and sensible losses, they're all gonna need to be accounted for and then replaced in order to truly correct the patient's free water deficit. If we're only replacing what that calculated deficit is over time, but they're continuing to lose water and we're not also replacing that, we're actually gonna be chasing our tail a little bit. So let's talk about the calculation here for this. We, we can actually determine how to correct the free water deficit with a couple quick calculations. First, we need to determine how long it's gonna to take to correct their free water deficit. To do this, we need to have a goal of how much we wanna lower the sodium each hour. So a conservative number would be something like 0.5 millimoles per hour. And again, this is a good conservative number to try and prevent cerebral edema, but we may choose to go with a higher rate, especially with higher sodium levels. And again, especially if the patients are experiencing symptoms as a result of that. And so what we do is we take the sodium level of the patient, minus 140, and then divide that by our correction rate. So if we use our last example of the 25-year-old male with a sodium of 158, we would do 158 minus 40 divided by 0.5, which gives us 36 hours that we would want to correct this. Now, once we know how long to correct, we need to divide the free water deficit by the number of hours that we just calculated to get our hourly rate, either to give them enterally or via IV with D5 water. So again, for our gentleman, we're talking 6.6 .6 liters or 6,600 milliliters divided by 36 hours, which equals 183 milliliters per hour. Now, again, this does not include ongoing losses. We would need to figure out what we expect their losses to be over that period of time in which we're going to be replacing this free water deficit and then increasing the rate to make sure that we're also covering those losses as well. All right, you guys, so that was the overview of free water deficit, really kind of covering what it is and, and how it is that it makes sense that our patient's sodium level can be used as a surrogate for this, how we do the calculation to determine what that free water deficit is, and then how we're actually going to replace that and a couple of calculations we use in order to determine that. I uh, really hope that you guys enjoyed this lesson. I hope that you found it useful. Uh, if you did, please go down below and leave this lesson a like. Uh, it really goes a long way to help support this channel, and I really appreciate it when you guys do that, uh, as well as leave me a comment down below. Uh, I love to hear from you guys, answer your questions. I try to respond to just about everybody, as well as make sure to subscribe to this lesson if you haven't already, and then share this lesson with anybody else that you think might find it useful. A uh, special shout out to the awesome YouTube and Patreon members out there. The support that you guys are willing to show for this channel is truly appreciated and is going to continue to allow me to do bigger and better things moving forward here. 
For the rest of you guys, if you'd be interested in showing support for this channel, then you can join the YouTube membership down below or head on over to the Patreon page and check out some of the additional perks that you guys get for doing just that. You can also support this channel by following some of the links down in the lesson description, as well as checking out some of the awesome shirt designs I have down there as well. Make sure you guys stay tuned for the next lesson in this series, otherwise check out a couple really awesome lessons I'm going to link to right here. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, have a great day.